Good evening, good evening, and thank you for joining us this evening for our Village of Elsip board meeting. Today is February 3rd, uh, 2020. We'll call this meeting order at 733. Um, before we get started, uh, can I get someone to make the motion, please, uh, to have Eric O'Donnell act as uh, clerk pro, pro tem this evening? Uh, clerk's not available. Okay. I'll second that. Thanks. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. So, Eric O'Donnell, everybody. Uh, Eric is our uh, office supervisor here in the clerk's uh, office, Erica. and she'll be our clerk this evening. There you go. Hmm? Fantastic. That's a great job. Thank you. So, Eric, would you call the roll, please? Trustee Dizel? Here. Trustee Zielinski? Here. Trustee Juarez? Here. Trustee McLaughlin? Here. Trustee Murphy? Here. Trustee Navas Barza? Here. Mayor Ryan? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, before we start the meeting, uh, we do have a bid opening uh, this evening. So we have an RFP opening for the Pulaski Road Corridor TIF. Um, the vacant land located south of the building identified as 11638 South Pulaski Road, Elsip, Illinois. We did receive only one. No, what you can say though, Erica, is just that um, we did receive this. Um, this was actually. I'm looking for see where their name is at. And the developer is Matthew Weil, managing member of Barton Real Estate Holdings LLC. Okay. And you know, I would just, just read that first paragraph okay. right there. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Weil is also majority shareholder and president of corporations that own and operate Firewater Barbecue and Brew Restaurants in Crest Hill, Geneva, and Lombard, Illinois and is co-owner of Whiskey Hill Brewing Company in Westmont. Do you want his contact information, Ed? No, uh, if it's otherwise we'll defer everything else to the committee. Okay, everything else will go to committee and we'll review later. Okay, so we did we did only receive one RFP Correct. Uh, for tonight's bid opening. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, officers report, starting with myself. Um, I did speak with um, a popular real estate broker this afternoon. Uh, just so everybody knows, I don't know if everybody's familiar with uh, Swanson Construction uh, had retired. Uh, they moved out of their location maybe two weeks ago over on Mayfield Street. Um, and we do have uh, an interested party uh, already that wants to uh, look at that. I'm not sure in what capacity, but I do have a meeting with them this week uh, to talk about that. Also, I spoke with... Um, Trustee Zielinski, uh, thank you. We, we talked uh, actually today, but... Uh, regarding the uh, ex 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 expediting vehicle stickers for the uh, repeat uh, seniors and disabled folks within the village. And we've got that on the agenda this evening, so thank you for taking care of that. Um, next was um, I'm working with Frank DeLiberto uh, on something new for Cicero Avenue, and I'll have something to report to the board on that real soon. And um, I also met Roger and I sat down with Impel Union uh, the other day and um, they, they are going to probably end up going with a, an underground water storage, which was a hold up to pave the back of their parking areas and stuff then too. So MWR did, did give them some direction with um, Will with Landmark being the, um, who are the, what is Landmark's title again? I know they're an engineering firm, but uh, did, do they look out for MWRD's interest? Is that what that is? No, they're, they typically work for the developer. I see. Okay, so they're working for Impel Union, but mm -hmm. they're working on a program there, and they did get something from MWRD on water retention. So whether it's underground or having a, to establish a retention pond at the back of their property off the tollway, um, he said they're probably going to spend the, the additional money and go with the underground. So it looks like a good venture uh, moving forward with them. And then tomorrow, I'm going to attend. I just talking to Will. I was invited uh, on behalf of Robbins Engineering, but I'm going to sit in with a group of um, communities tomorrow by invitation only on a um, 
it's called the uh, Southland Water Agency uh, to discuss possible alternative water um, supply from Indiana maybe, right? Just to see. I know we went through a process, process like that some years ago, and like I said at last week's meeting, I think everybody's cherished those things a little bit from that one, but this might be a, a good a good source, and certainly we're going to go and get some reports on it, and I can report back to the board after we hear what, what's got to be said. Yeah, it's a, a different landowner where the pump is um, actually proposed from the lake, and it's a different group of municipalities as well. Okay. So it's more functional. <coughs> Well, I appreciate the invitation. I'm looking forward to hearing the presentation tomorrow. We're in South Holland. So. Are they actually going to get a pipe in the lake? Yeah. I, I couldn't hear you, Trustee. What? Mm -hmm. I was just wondering if they're actually going to get a pipe in the lake. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that would that would that would have been a great start. We can go all we can run all day on that yet too. You know. They, they it yeah, I get it. So, um, but that's all I had for this evening. Uh, the clerk's report. Presentation and approval of the January 6, 2020 Board of Trustee meeting minutes and presentation and approval of the January 21st, 2020 Board of Trustee meeting minutes. That's all. Okay, thank you. Th then we have our attorney's report. We have Mike Kankar with us tonight. No reports, sir. Okay. Engineer's report, Will? Um, I don't have any further updates from the report uh, last board meeting other than the sanitary lining should start at the end of this week or beginning of next week. And the um, storm sewer lines? Uh, sanitary. Santa, I'm sorry. Okay. And um, how, I'm sorry, I got busy with another meeting uh, a few minutes ago, but uh, how are we looking with that, with the uh, design engineering yet uh, for 125th and Pulaski? Danny, we, are we, are we have to go out to, have we got anything back on that yet? Or? They're, they're completing designs, and uh, we sh should be able to get it out to bid early spring. Nice. Okay. I, I didn't know how close that timetable was. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, it's spring. I don't want to bother you guys every weekend. I, I just no, I didn't get that ballpark, so okay. Uh, anything else, Will? Uh, n nothing else, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, public forum. Did anyone in the audience wish to address the board tonight? Sure, come on up. Uh, good evening. Just wanted to comment on the article I read in the Sun Times today regarding the red light and the complaint filed. Oh, sure. My question is, you know, I assume it'll probably be a lengthy, whatever hearing and then trial and whatever. Uh -huh. What's the village's uh, next step on who's going to represent the village and all that? Does it come out of taxpayer money or to private money? No, you know what? I I doubt. Well, let's put it this way: I actually did put something to, together to to speak to, but the village is not named in anything. In fact, I'm I am. Is is uh, hopefully you are. I'm extremely disappointed the way all this has been played out so far because. Yeah, I read the complaint and yeah. the village has mentioned it. it you know, and no, the village wasn't mentioned. It was just my name. So the, the no village money's involved. You as the like mayor that. represent the village. That's what I'm. Yeah, and also yeah. the village name comes up. It's the only time the village is, is you know is, is more or less the the onus is on them. Although um, maybe the attorney can speak better to it as well. But you know. I want everybody to understand. I, I am extremely disappointed with the way the newspapers have portrayed this whole thing, and actually, how my name keeps coming up. You know, because when I spoke with the government back in September, I'm one of the good guys. You know, I'm one of the informative, t uh, you know, conversations that were taken, and everything else has been taken out of context, in my in, in my opinion. Um, I, I, I was just discussing with our attorney this latest thing that came out today. Um, it was interesting to see that the gentleman that filed the complaint with, with his attorney, uh, his name is Lawrence Gress. He's from Downers Grove. Lawrence alleges, and, and this was in something that the Tribune printed back in September, Lawrence uh, alleges that in a lawsuit that, um, that his attorneys, the Kent Maynard Law Firm, said that he was the subject to a sham interview uh, last year and passed over for a job at Pace Bus Service and uh, in favor of Senator Sandoval's son, uh, Martin Jr., uh, who, the lawsuits, who the lawsuit said was like 40 years younger than the man. So he's, he's got a lawsuit he's doing with Pace Bus Service. So now he comes back in what you're going to see either in today or tomorrow's paper. He goes back to the same law firm and he says that um, the law firm now says, and that's what you read today, uh, they're again representing Mr. Lawrence Gress, 
who was uh, ticketed uh, after going through an intersection in Oakbrook Terrace in 2018, monitored by safe speed cameras, um, in the lawsuit he claims that uh, were corruptly installed and his lawsuit seeks class action status. So now his attorney says, um, you know, if you go around bribing public officials to get money in, in your pocket corruptly, you shouldn't be able to keep those funds that you collect. And that's what's in today's paper and tomorrow's paper, whatever. I agree with his attorney. I says I, everyone would agree that you, um, with you, Mr. Maynard, that however, Safe Speed didn't bribe the senator, the government did. Okay, that was in yesterday's paper. That was in the Tribune and Sub Times yesterday. That Safe Speed didn't pay any money to that senator, the government did, through an, a, through like a cooperating witness is what they did. The lawsuit names myself, and I don't even have a red light camera. And when I did. It wasn't with safe speed, it was with Gatso back in 2018. So um, last week's admission by the senator, and this is again in today's paper, said he took $70,000 in protection money from someone with ties to safe speed, as both the Sun-Times and Tribune acknowledged yesterday. The bribe money came from the government. All of the people mentioned in the lawsuit that you're referring to were cherry-picked from the Sun-Times, because all those names that came up were all names that were in the paper and stuff at one point over the last six months. Um, plus, he even names the village of McCook in there, who never has even had red light cameras. Okay? But he, but they're in his lawsuit and stuff then, too. Um, and certainly, I just, I just spoke to our attorneys this morning about this and so forth, and I tell you, I plan to seek damages. I plan to seek damages from all the parties connected to that article and the lawsuit because I'm told even a federal judge wouldn't be pleased to see innocent people named in lawsuits like that, especially there's some civilian names in there too. They have nothing to do with anything. And, and, and those articles that were written by the newspaper were basically hearsay articles and stuff then too. It, that's what those were. I mean, I know, I know all the players. I know all the people. I go to enough of these meetings. And when I spoke to the government last September, like I said, I was in the capacity of a good guy. Yeah, yet the, the newspapers and, and Facebook are doing their best to either sell the newspaper or um, obviously try and make another uh, party you know, look good, that kind of thing. You know? So all I want to say about it is it's just I work here very hard every day to make this a great place to live and work. You know? and, and I really I appreciate your interest too, sir. Don't ever feel bad. You know, if you ever want, please, you know, Give me a call, man. I'm, 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 I pick up the phone here all the time. I'm happy to talk to whoever wants to get my side of things. I'm just really disappointed that, you know, my name keeps coming up and all this kind of stuff then too. And I haven't spoke to anybody since last September regarding this whole deal. And the stuff you saw in the papers, that's stuff that, sh that comes out of like FOIA requests and things like that yet too. And people fabricate their own stories and everything else. Anybody ever wants to talk to me about it, please, I'm, I'm here. That kind of thing yeah. too. But I appreciate you asking the question though too, sir. Thank you very much. And just as a reminder, what they said in yesterday's newspaper, I just made this clip out. Yesterday's Tribune, it says, earlier this week, Senator Sandoval pleaded guilty in federal court with prosecutors outlining how he advanced the interests of SafeSpeed, a red light camera company with businesses in many suburbs. In return for his services as SafeSpeed's <coughs> protector in the Illinois Senate, Sandoval took about $70,000 in bribes, according to the plea agreement. The money which was supplied by the government was given to the senator by a safe speed representative who was working secretly cooperating with the authorities according to court records safe speed which also had previously given mr sandoval campaign contributions has said the bribe payments were not authorized by anyone in the company so that's what i had a, i'm actually I'm, I'm coming back from wisconsin yes so i'm reading this thing it's like geez and that's the first time they've ever came out and actually said it. but all this just came to light like a week ago through that plea agreement and stuff so no everything as far as i'm concerned we're, we're fine and i'm i'm hoping all this gets we're going to ask for this all be dismissed but you know it's everything's fine okay thank you sir anybody else okay thank you um, finance report, Trustee McLaurin. First, I have a request for approval of a list of payroll dated January 31st, 2020, totaling $383,459 even. Next, I have a request for approval of accounts payable dated February 3rd, 2020. From the recap, general fund, $383,976.85. Road and bridge, $180,535.20. MFT, $1,506. 
Pulaski Road Corridor TIF, $3,113. Water and Sewer, $580,520.32. Heritage, $45,061.49. For a grand total of all funds of $1,194,712.86. Next, I have a request for approval of the Village of Alsip 457B Plan Investment Policy Statement. And that's all I have. All right. Thank you. The Fire Committee, Trustee Murphy. I have approval to have the attorney draft an addendment to the ordinance to reflect the lift, lift fee scheduled discussed at January 27, 2020 committee meeting. And number two, approval of the 2019 annual Activity report of the village of the uh, of Elsa Fire Department. And that's all I have, sir. Thank you. Um, police and traffic safety, Trustee Dalzell. No report to safety, Baron. All right, thank you. Uh, next, public, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> public work and boat launch, Trustee Juarez. I have an approval for contract extension to perform additional work to D. Ryan Tree and Landscape Service in the amount not to exceed 19000 this extension would complete all remaining village parkway trees to be pruned west of Cicero Avenue. That's all, Mayor. All right, thank you. Um, Mike, I, I completely forgot to remind you today, unless you did it. Did you, did you bring over that new front end loader we just got? That's okay. I, I was going to remind you today. No big deal. But um, maybe next board meeting, we actually just took, um, we just uh, we got received our new front end loader that, that the board approved. And Mike said uh, last week we just got it. So um, we'll put it out there for everybody to see. And uh, we got a great price on that and so forth then, too. So thank you for uh, putting that together, Mike. Also, again, for the record, anybody that didn't see last week's uh, committee meeting, D. Ryan Tree Service has zero to do with me. I don't know these guys. You know, it just, it's like Smith and Jones. Now the Ryans know each other and stuff, you know. So um, water and sewer report, Trustee Navar Esparza. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the Water Department presented its 2021 budget. Um, at the budget hearing today at 6.30, and that's all I have. All right. Thank you. Next, uh, Building and Health, Trustee Zielinski. No report this evening. Okay. Human Resource and Insurance, Trustee Murphy. I have approval to advertise for request for proposal to renew four insurance policies effective May 1st, 2020 through April 31st, 2021 for number one, general liability, number two, automotive, or automobile, automobile, rather, uh, number three, primary excess liability, and number four, secondary excess liability. And that's all I have, sir. Let's change it to 4.30. Pardon me? Let's change it to 4.30. Yeah, 4.31. And okay. So that was me. I was, that was a guess on my part. It was the end of the month and stuff, no so I want 31. Oh, yeah, right. there isn't. <laughs> You're right. I keep forget. We got the leap year thing that going on too. So, thank you. Special committee reports. Economic development. Trustee Nava Esparza. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I touched base with two potential businesses. Um, one focused in health and wellness, and the other in automotive services. So I just need to follow up with um, the building commissioner for ordinance just to see if, you know, it's a good fit for the building that they're interested in. Um, also, I attended the SSMA SSMMA census workshop. Um, again, just giving us a timeline of census activities. Uh, households would start receiving literature on March. And also, uh, municipalities shared that uh, they have people posing as census uh, workers. They shouldn't, there are no census workers out at this time. Um, so if you do s have someone approach you uh, to notify the police, um, there are no census workers at this time being dispatched, you know, taking um, information from households. Also, um, if you don't want a census worker to come to your home, take you know participate in the census online um, as quickly as possible, or else someone will be dispatched and, and knocking on your door for information. Starting May first. Yes, starting May first. Um, also, with the LSEP Complete Count Committee, um, thank you to the Chamber of Commerce for their in-kind donation of, for a booth for our census activities at the Chamber Community Expo on February 22nd. And also our next um, LSEP Complete Count Committee, um, the proposed date is Wednesday, February 26th at 6 p.m. So I will send just a brief like blurb to be posted on the website or the Village's Facebook page. Again, Wednesday, February 26th at 6 p.m. It's open to the public. 
So if you want to participate, volunteer, uh, serve as an ambassador to try to get um, our community counted, uh, please come to here to Village Hall. Um, and that's all I have. Very good. Thank you. Uh, next, we have the uh, Village Property, Shosie McLaughlin. All I have is request for approval of the addendum that our attorney was nice enough to draft for us um, to be added to the Heritage Department leases in regards to cannabis. Mm -hmm. And prohibition thereof. <laughs> so, again, for the benefit of the students, we said that there will be no mm -hmm. cannabis smoking, smoking. products mm -hmm. used in any of the village owned properties. We have got two 55 and older communities with over 512 apartments that only uh, edible would be ac acceptable, right? Under Correct. the new law? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and that applies to medical as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, next, the Ordinance Legislation Committee, Trustee Zielinski. I have an approval of an ordinance of the Village of Alsip granting a variation slash exception to the United States Department of Veteran Affairs with respect to the payment of the annual vacant property registration fee for the proper li property located at 11529 South Kilbourne Avenue, Alsip, Illinois. And also, I have an approval to have the village attorney amend the ordinance regarding vehicle stickers being renewed by seniors and disabil uh, disabled via United States mail. Uh, on that one, I just had a question. As I recall, last week uh, when we were talking about it, um, we were in favor of veterans getting a discount as well. I think Trustee Dalzell and I and some trustees over there were in agreement about having that, and I thought even Mike Crater was okay with that. So, well, what I did was I um, I spoke the, the email I sent out to everybody with just the financial, uh, just a financial overview of that conversation. Um, I actually pointed back to the trustee that would have had like basically that money is known as a wheel tax that actually is that de dedicated to just roads and bridges and so forth. So. To speak to that money, if we discounted that, if we took that money out of somebody's budget, I felt it only fair that that committee speaks to it and so forth then too. So mm -hmm. that's why I was volleying back to Trustee Juarez uh, to say that if, if you want to risk taking, you know, additional possibly, we don't know exactly, but it could be as much as $15,000 out of her account, out of that particular fund, I think it would be up to her to bring that to the table. And we spoke today, and you said you didn't want to discuss the matter at this time? Right. I spoke with Mike Freider, and he informed me that the two of you had spoke uh, yeah. earlier in the week, and the conclusion came about that we would not, we would leave it to where it's at and um, not touch the road budget. Yeah, and sir, we can talk about next week at committee, too. You know, it's, it's not, not, not a dead issue, but it's not on the agenda. Well, for having the attorney amend something in an ordinance, why would we... I agree with you. to do something. Right. No, in not. fact, that's why I didn't have anything on the agenda originally because, you know, I agree with you. I, I would, if I was in, a, I would have did both. But, again, um, I had to get something on the agenda. The clerk asked me for some language regarding, you know, us, utilizing the mail because I want to try and help the seniors and the disabled. Mm -hmm. That was my whole conversation about using the mail program instead of making them physically come in to get new vehicle stickers every right. year. But as far as discounting, stickers for veterans it, it, it's certainly a great idea but I really leave that in the hands of the department who's who uh, the affected budget is I didn't think it fair that you know anybody else stepped in to take money out of their budget and stuff so if she wants to you know bring that back up that there would certainly be her purview next week at committee we can talk about that and that's really that just an uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be an amendment to this we're just talking about how to expedite stickers uh, for these folks, but when you're talking about an ordinance that changes the fee structure, it's a whole different ordinance anyway and stuff. Okay. Too. All right. So Thank as you. of today, we're not taking action at this time. So, yeah, we didn't have it on there because, you know, if, any, if it's going to be brought up, we'll do it on our committee. All right. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Okay. Today. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Microphone. Oh, one second, Mike. Let's get you a mic. Mm -hmm. so. I have been in discussions with the finance director where we're working currently through my budget to see what kind of an impact they would have. So okay. we may have a better information as to which route to go for the next committee meeting. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Mike. Can I say something? Sure. If we end up doing that, I just want to make sure that when we go through the ordinance, it's very clear as to what we're accepting as far as 
forms of identification for the veterans so that we know what we're supposed to be looking for at the window. Please. Wouldn't it be their card? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would think DD-214. I forget the number. What's it called? DD-214. That's right. <laughs> so, and that's going to be, what we're talking about, folks, is anybody that was, let's say you're in our, you're in our records right now, because we're going to be sending you a notice card anyway if you're affected by being a senior or a disabled person. If you got discounts last year, you were a senior last year, you were a senior this year, and the same with, with being disabled. I just want to help, I think, it, not only the clerk's office to, manpower-wise, but certainly I don't want to drag everybody in or physically if you didn't have to be, because these days everybody's doing everything through the mail anyway. So we're trying to, you know, lighten that load a little bit. But certainly if you just became a senior, because we, we honor that for 62 years and up, correct? So if you just became a senior and you're 62 plus, please come in and if you can demonstrate that you're a senior or that you're disabled and, or, you know, that's the, that's the information we need to see in order to qualify and get you on the books because we're not we're not going to know that until you demonstrate that and stuff but anybody that has pr previously mm -hmm. we're just trying to we're trying to make everybody's life a little easier too absolutely okay. we just want to streamline the program is what i'm trying to do we're supposed to be following so but, that but aren't we confusing a couple things here i mean ordinance wise as opposed to procedure wise so do we have to codify our procedures as far as how we administer I kind of did because you made a great point because it was never, as you said, it was never codified or demonstrated on what the process is. All the all the ordinance says is that the clerk's office delivers the sticker to the purchaser. Okay, right, but, and we never said how. I don't think we should get the minutia in an ordinance on how we perform the function. Well, how about well, I can have? Yeah, is is Mike. the purpose? Of, is it what you're proposing just to allow the clerk to do this by mail as opposed to walk up? Well, yes. You can do that administratively. You don't need an ordinance for right. that. Right. Well, that's you fine just, by me. You just need it for what you charge on the what you charge, and then sometimes it helps the people in the office if they can point to something and say. Here's why we. This is the identification. I mean, it, you know, right, for their right, sake. But right. Well, it you does say it in the ordinance right now. That's why I just want to make well, sure if what, we're going to leave it in is, there or whatever. We're but no, take you out. don't have to. You you could do that. <laughs> I mean, you don't need an ordinance to do it by do it by uh, mail as opposed to people walking up. Right. That, is that would, all this was about. Yeah, that, is, that would be too much of an amendment for this, then, Mike. Right. What's and that? That would be too much of an amendment. In other words, if we had everyone vote to agree to do this through the mail. Well, it's like saying paying your water bill. You can pay your water bill when you walk up here. You can pay your water bill by mail. That's up to the people who run the water department how they want to do their water bills. I mean, you, I don't think you need, if I understand the conversation, you don't need an ordinance for what you're proposing to do. Exactly. Right. Okay. And, and today we accept credit cards. And then maybe we don't take Discover. But procedurally, if all of a sudden the clerk's office wants to, to accept Discover card, that's a, a pr an administrative task rather than by ordinance. So if we want to, if so we don't have to do anything, then that's what I'm saying. Possibly, that's what I'm saying. So if we just want money. Look at it. Yeah. <laughs> but the ordinance right now says that if you have to bring it in and you have to be in person. So if we're not going to do that's that anymore, I just want to make sure it's taken out of the ordinance just so we know what I agree to follow. There's a lot more fees. What am I supposed to do that? Well, that's what I was asking about, about amending the ordinance to <laughs> say that. That's all. Say what? There's a final. There's a final paragraph in there. Mm-hmm. There's a paragraph in there that says that you have to be, uh, present. Have to be present, and that's it's not other one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. And we think it should be the winner need not be present. Mm. Absolutely, <laughs> that's fine. I just want to know what we're supposed to do. So that well, that's the okay. So then my we can amend part of the question just to say that well, no, it's it's correct. Approval to have the village attorney amend the ordinance mm -hmm. regarding. So no, I was correct. How I wrote so that. That would be taken out. And yeah. So we just need that language anymore. taken out. They're going to allow the mail system to do it. That's all. But there's there's or a they final can do it online. That, a, that should be struck. Right. In the ordinance. Yes. Yes. Sir. Okay. I'll look at that and. Okay. What, what, what does the final sentence say? Long says you have to talk the about. person that's receiving the discount needs to be in person. Right. Okay, and you want to change that? To say mail is acceptable. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, that's the kind of stuff you shouldn't even have in the ordinance. That's just, that's just operational. Well, it's an old ordinance. No, I, I get it. No, I, I get it. If it's in there, you got to do that. I agree. I agree, but that's... Okay. Well, thank you for bringing that right. up, then, too. Um, IT, Trustee Dalzell. Your report this evening, Mayor. Okay. Planning and zoning and licenses, Trustee Juarez. I have an approval of a list of licenses dated January 13, 2020 through January 27, 2020. 
That's all, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, trustees, any presentations, petitions, or communications you want to share? I had a couple of quickies. Um, just if anybody's interested, uh, this goes out to all the elected officials. Uh, Trustee Warriors went with me a couple of years ago. They have the um, Southwest Conference of Mayors uh, organization I belong to is going to have their local government expo coming up Saturday, March 14th, 2020. This starts at 8.30 in the morning. They have breakfast at 9. Uh, they have a program at 9.30, and they have an expo. In other words, a lot of um, useful t tools and services available to, for government. Uh, this is no charge uh, to attend an event like this, and this is going to be at the Belvedere Chateau uh, Banquet Hall at um, 8055 West 103rd Street, so 103rd and Roberts Road. And um, it's, it's a nice event. I've been to this a couple of times. So if you if you want to attend, please let me know or let Becky know, and we'll get you signed up. Also, I got something just today from the uh, Board of Review of Cook County, and I uh, quickly wanted to share, just as uh, President Ryan just wanted to let you know, about a new program administered by the Cook County Board of Review and ask for your help. Cook County residents are now eligible to apply for a surviving spouse tax abatement. The Cook County Board of Commissioners and the Chicago City Council have passed ordinances to authorize a property tax abatement in their jurisdictions uh, for the surviving spouses of Cook County's fallen heroes. The program serves as surviving spouses of a fallen police officer, soldier, or rescue worker. This program will recognize and honor ongoing, the ongoing impact of the sacrifice on these families. The program, the program can abate up to 100% of the surviving spouse's Cook County and City of Chicago property tax liability. Uh, the Cook County Board of Review will administer the program by surviving spouses, and surviving spouses apply for this abatement with, obviously, the Board of Review. The uh, Board of Review will consider applications and supporting evidence, hold a hearing if needed, and recommend qualifying applicants for final approval. If approved and admitted into the program, the surviving spouse may reaffirm the facts, remain the same, and continue in the program yearly. Here's where you come in. We want to ensure all eligible Cook County families know about this new program. We need your help to ensure that any of your constituents who could benefit from this program know to apply. This program is an opportunity for us to assist the families of our fallen heroes with the financial costs that have resulted from their losses. Uh, please don't hesitate to, to contact uh, Michael Richards. I'll certainly have this posted, and uh, we'll put this on our Facebook and web page as, as well then, too. So we thank the Board of Review and Dan Patlick's office uh, for doing so. That's all I had on that. Uh, trustees, did anyone we want to remove any items from the consent agenda. I would like to remove item F. F? F is in Frank. Frank. Okay. Anyone else? I'd like to <coughs> remove I for discussion. I. Anybody else? Okay. Um, and can I get a motion to establish a consent agenda? So moved. Second. Okay, roll call number two to establish the consent agenda. Trustee Dizel? Yes. Trustee Zielinski? Yes. Trustee Juarez? Yes. Trustee McLaughlin? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Navas Barza? Yes. Motion carries. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Roll call number three to approve the consent agenda as presented. Item F has been removed. Item I, the date will be changed to April 30th, 2021, and has also been removed. And item number K shall now be known as ordinance number 2020-02-1. Trustee Dizel. Yes. Trustee Zielinski. Yes. Trustee Juarez. Yes. Trustee McGawhorn. Yes. Trustee Murphy. Yes. Trustee Navas Barza. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, oh, go ahead. Do you want to fill in your information then, too? It did already. It did that. Oh, you know, with uh, like the ordinance number and stuff like that? I did. <coughs> Motion. Okay. I'm sorry. I missed that. I didn't write mine down fast enough. That's okay. Yeah. I'm too fast for you, man. Keep up. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you want to come back, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's roll call number five. Hey, I, I pass all my, my tests. <laughs> you know, so. 
um, the, our, our, we're going back to the items that were removed. So, right. um, F and I. Le right. Letter F, um, approval to have the attorney draft an amendment to the ordinance to reflect the lift fee schedule uh, discussed at the January 27th, 2020 committee meeting. Trish McLaurin, do you have a question on that? Um, I pulled this for further discussion, and first I would like to apologize for not making the meeting last, night, last week. Um, you, nobody would have wanted to be around me breathing on them. <laughs> um, however, um, one of the things that I wanted to bring up, and I appreciate the chief putting together um, the list of alternatives, but specifically where I'm having a problem with this list of alternatives that were provided, not one of them will actually provide a lift assist, which is what we had specifically asked for, is if we're not going to call the fire department when you've fallen and you can't get up, then who do we call? Mm -hmm. And none of these on on this list are available for that option. And, I mean, we've spent a lot of time discussing, especially in the last couple of weeks, I mean, debating over a $30 discount, you know, for our, our senior citizens and our disabled people, uh, you know, on the vehicle stickers, but yet we're going to turn around and charge them $150 because they've fallen and they can't get up. I mean, I don't think that that is a reasonable expectation, especially on our most vulnerable residents who need help. I mean, I understand completely that there are those that abuse the system, but I don't think we should be punishing every one of our seniors and those that need help because of those few that are abusing things. I 110% agree. Um. Any other discussion before we ask the question here? Um, I'm not a, a health professional, but I do have um, people in my family that are, and I know that there's home health mm -hmm. services and so forth, that after a certain age, you might be eligible to have a home health uh, worker come to your home routinely and so forth, and I think that's worked out through in private, maybe insurance, I'm not sure, I'm not familiar Except with that. Those are going to be scheduled. And I say, and I will give you an exact example. I mean, literally last Monday night, I was saying, unfortunately, I said, I was too sick to be around anybody. But my stepfather had fallen and couldn't get up. And my mother was frantically calling members of the household, trying to find somebody to help get him back into his wheelchair, as opposed to getting another bill for $150 from the fire department. So fortunately, I said, my husband just happened to walk in the door five minutes after she made her frantic phone call and was able to go and help. But I mean, it happens and you can't call you can't call these places at that time of night. I mean, the options are only a family member or the fire department. Thank you. Um, I will say I've, I've said at a previous meeting that I know it's it's a tough I agree everyone make mm -hmm. great points here. Chief, you you could bring up a good argument because I know you, you and I have talked about this plenty of time. Mm -hmm. um, we've got just a couple of uh, people that in the village that have been abusing the system and and, and just for the record too, uh, chief because you do have a, a couple of fresh faces in the room uh, give a couple of quick examples how many people might call yearly uh, uh, the the people that we have we only have less than six that are on a regular basis okay all right six one of them actually just moved out of town last week. Uh, she was scheduled to move out a while ago, and that was one. Okay. So we get come, we get some, some leave. We get some other ones. It's only a, a handful, and and like I said, what it comes down to is there's all other alternatives, but they usually do not seek the other alternatives. Yes, no. If you call up somebody, they're not going to have a service that's just going to come help you up. Yes, I understand that. But a lot of the services are there to help them prepare their home so they're not going to keep falling. And that's what a lot of it is about. That's the same thing with the letter. That's what the, the way the letter is addressed. Somewhere along the line is everybody just relies, like, I just call 911. And, and again, we're there for essential services. We're, we're there for emergencies, not for your convenience. And that's what's happening is the people that abuse it um, refuse to get other alternatives to help them with their issues. So... What I had said at a previous meeting, and certainly I'll stand by, is I, I did do a small um, survey of my own. I did call around with some other fire departments, and, <clears throat> yeah, everyone, as I, I, I 
reiterate the same language that everyone takes on the chin. It's a hard one, you know, but everyone is performing this service. When somebody calls for help, you know, even the city of Chicago, they'll send a truck out. If the ambulance isn't around, the truck goes out and they help them out. Oakland does it. A lot of the guys do it and stuff then, too. would be really interesting, I, and I, it's, I'm sitting here thinking about this now, uh, Trustee Dalzell, if I can defer to you. Um, at the other municipality you're affiliated with, how do you get police and fire to share that burden? How, do you know? Is there a specific... I mean, is there specific language that they're using in that, not just fire, but are they using all pu public safety? Uh, police department is generally the first that can respond and they'll assist with doing the lift. Obviously, they're not as skilled as the paramedics are. Uh -huh. um, if the lift assist is for a medical facility, then the police department won't respond because they've already got trained personnel on, on sure. scene. But, uh, I mean, they assist in it. To the chief's point, and I think the whole thing here is that he's trying to, it's not a black and white from the first instance. First instance, it, it, it's there. It's, it's taken care of by what this proposal is. It's those people who exceed the cap that the chief has identified. And at some point in time, um, the unfortunate thing is that if it was just a matter of a, list, a lift assist, and I, I can appreciate the chief's position with regards to uh, it, it could cause injury to the responding paramedics by performing that duty, it, it's not an easy job what his people do, and, uh, and there's risks involved with that. But when you have that same ambulance crew being the front line for a heart attack mm -hmm. or for a severe motor vehicle accident and they're off performing one of these lift assists, we're losing a, a lot of our critical infrastructure and, and personnel to some of the people who are making more than average use. Which is why I'd like to incorporate more personnel if I could, you know, that kind of thing. Not just put the onus just on fire. That kind of thing. And, and the other thing, too, is a lot of departments that do this have dedicated companies for their fire apparatus. We don't have that. We have jump companies. So I have four people at each station, two that are on the ambulance and two on the engine. So I don't have a dedicated company to say, okay, go ahead and help with the lift assist. That's what Oak Lawn does. That's what Crestwood does. They have the dedicated people. We do not have that. And it's been happened several times that we're on a lift assist and then, like Trustee said, is we get called for a heart attack, now we have a delay of an ambulance. All right? And, and sooner or later, it, it's going to catch up to us. It really is. Um, we've had a couple, we were actually on a couple structure fires that we had a delay, a response to one of our, our uh, normal people who falls and, again, he had family members that could have helped him but decided not to. You know, so that's, that's the biggest problem. It's not for every once in a while. Most of the people that take a lot of responsibility and make sure they're taken care of, it's the people that are refusing to get that additional help that's available to them. And the chief has got already planned a mechanism to review. So if it, it is a situation to where there is absolutely no other alternative, he can sit there and review that and, and mediate it. But... Um, I appreciate the list that uh, that he prepared. Uh, I'm glad that uh, Trustee McLaurin looked at that. Uh, it was my impression that that list was all inclusive and would provide for lift assist. I'd like to sit there and see if we could maybe locate a uh, a referral so that uh, we can help out to that regards as well. I mean, that's I'm just thinking. I mean, before we tell people you have an alternative, we need to give them an alternative. But but. <sighs> How many swings at the ball did you provide for in this ordinance, Chief? Free. Quite a few. <laughs> right. So, it, it's again, it's not the first occurrence and somebody gets an invoice. And, and I agree wholeheartedly, this is a tough subject. We're, as you had said, it's our elderly, and, and we've got a lot of things in place to help with that. And, and we've got two over 55 communities. Right. And this is a big <coughs> problem, not just for our village, um, but all the fire departments. Everybody's scrambling and, and scratching their head over the last couple of years because 
it, it just went through every once in a while to a, a normal day occurrence. I mean, there's we're doing two and three of them sometimes in, in one day in, in different places. And it's not always the same people. It's, no, it's but the you ones also that said are, we've only done 230 last year, which right. on average that is less than one a day. Sometimes we do three in one day. We might have, and have a couple for a couple of days. I mean, it, there's no perfect answer on how we're going to run calls. I, I wish I had that crystal ball, and I don't. So, but it is it is a common problem throughout the fire service. It ain't just our village. Mm. It's other villages, and it's especially ones that hit that don't have a lot of manpower to be able to splitting their personnel from one place to another, or you know, like I said, the the ones that have dedicated dedicated companies, they're sending three or four people um, on one vehicle to take care of that. We got to send two vehicles to do the same thing. All right. You, okay. Now I'm I'm going to ask the question. Propose the question here then. So we have uh, letter F. And I apologize. Anybody else? Any other question before I ask? Approval to have the village attorney. I'm sorry. To, approval to have the attorney draft an amendment to the ordinance to reflect the lift fee schedule um, as discussed at the January 7th, 2020 committee meeting. Uh, I need a motion and a second if we're going to vote on this. I make the motion. Second. Okay, roll call number four to approve item F, approval to have the attorney draft an, or an amendment to the ordinance to reflect the lift fee schedule discussed at the January 27, <coughs> 2020 committee meeting. Trustee Dizel. Yes. Trustee Zielinski. Yes. Trustee Juarez. No. Trustee McLaughlin. No. Trustee Murphy. Yes. Trustee Navas Barza. Yes. Motion carries. All right, thank you. Uh, next was letter I. This is the approval to advertise for an RFP, uh, otherwise known as a request for a proposal, to renew four insurance policies effective May 1st, 2020 through April 30th. Make a correction on that, 2021, for our um, general liability, automobile, primary excess li liability, and secondary excess liability. Uh, Trustee Zelensky, you had a question? Yeah, I just wanted to ask, uh, are we actually going to go out and look for companies for this RFP, or are we just sending it out as a general notice and getting that maybe one person that comes in? and We're going to advertise an RFP like we always do on our village website, and uh, certainly uh, insurance companies are aware um, of who we are, so should they seek our business, it's it's up to them to submit a uh, an RFP that we can open up. Um, we're going to have a... a, a um, We'll certainly advertise a date that they're due by and so forth, but um, I haven't even been told by our current carrier when, I'm sorry, Shanae, are you still here? Shanae, is our current carrier actually suggested when they might have those numbers ready for renewal for May 1? I believe they said around probably the end of March. End of March, okay. So, I mean, in all fairness, we'll have them submit the same way. You know, so nobody's <coughs> undercutting, nobody knows what their number's going to be and all that kind of thing then, too. So... Uh, we're certainly willing to work with them because they we have to because they've got our number right now and so forth. But um, the renewal isn't until April. I'm sorry, May one anyway. So if we set this up like second week of April, we're okay with that then, right? For a for a bid opening, yeah. well, we'll do it like the like our first committee meeting to have it approved at the following uh, board meeting. Meeting, we can approve then that same day or by April 6th. Okay. We'll pursue it first week of April then to get it done. Okay. But yeah, trustee, to answer your question, we're just going to advertise a fair process. Anybody that wants to bid on that work is certainly able to do so. That's the RFP process. C certainly, um, we should get more bids because. Everybody pretty much does all these four things. Not everyone does workman's comp. Isn't that correct? Exactly. There's only a few companies that There's do There's only a handful that does workman's work comp. comp. So we should get a good return on this RFP, I'm thinking, because everyone does it. Um, any other questions on this? Trustee, you okay? That's it. All right. Uh, then I'll ask the question. Approval to advertise for a request for proposal to renew... 
uh, four insurance policies effective uh, May 1st, 2020 through April 30th, 2021 for the general liability, automobile, primary excess liability, and secondary excess liability. I need a motion and a second, please. I'll make so a motion. motion. Second. Roll call number five to approve item I. Trustee Dizel? Yes. Trustee Zielinski? Yes. Trustee Juarez? Yes. Trustee McLawhorn? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Navas Barza? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, trustees, anybody have any unfinished business? Uh, any new business? I want to thank Erica O'Donnell. Great job, Matt Erica. Thank you. You're Good certainly job, welcome Erica. to come back. You know? Thanks. <laughs> Because you need me. Yeah, I know. I know. You did a great job. Thank you. Uh, can I get a motion, please, to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Enjoy your evening. We'll we'll adjourn this at uh, 825. And again, you can always see this uh, meeting on our YouTube. Uh, we do we tape all these meetings overhead.